Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my presentation is on Windows 10, which is the new OS from Microsoft, which just came out 10 days ago. And of course, they came out with another OS that was to go across all platforms for PCs, desktops, and um, tablets, and phones. And the cool thing about it is that it will automatically detect which device you install it on and uh, conform to that device, which is kind of neat. It's a added feature. And um, you know, the new Microsoft OS bridges the gap between PCs and tablets without alienating anyone. The, uh, the new OS promises to combine the best bits of old and new Windows features into a cohesive package while correcting nearly all of the steps of Windows 8. For one, the start menu is back. And to name a few more, a link, fast internet explorer, replacement called Edge, uh, Microsoft Siri like voice controlled virtual assistant Cortana, and the ability to stream real time games to your desktop from an Xbox One in another room. And there's kind of what the desktop looks like. You can have multiple desktops, virtual desktops, which is kind of cool too. Um, here's a brief history on the, just a timeline of Windows. And on uh, November 10th, uh, 1983, the first public preview of Windows, which required two floppy disks and at least 265 kilobytes of RAM, which ran on the five and a quarter floppy disk over there, which thank goodness they're gone. And then uh, November 20th, 1985, Windows 1.0 was released, a 16-bit multitasking shell that sits on top of MS-DOS. Users have to navigate using a mouse, a form of input poorly received by the critics at the time. So we're used to it. Uh, Windows 1.0 was finally declared obsolete on December 31st, 2001, more than 16 years after its launch. And on December 9th, 1987, Microsoft shipped Windows 2.0, which features desktop icons and the beloved control panel. And then on May 22nd, 1990, the third time's the charm of Windows 3.0. And it becomes the first successful version of Windows offering a graphical user interface. October 27, 1992, Microsoft announces Windows for Workgroups 3.1, allowing peer-to-peer -peer workgroup and domain networking support. PC joined the world of client server computing. And then uh, July 27, 1993, Microsoft releases Windows NT 3.1, a 32-bit operating system enabling businesses to use more powerful scientific and engineering applications. Windows NT continues to be the core across Windows today. Then uh, January 30, 2007, Microsoft releases Windows Vista, an operating system the tech industry would rather forget, but is until Windows 8 came out, I guess. On um, October 22, 2009, uh, Windows 7 is released in one of Microsoft's most successful operating systems to date, with 56% of PCs using the OS today, still. And Microsoft's mainstream support ended on January 13, 2015. But extended support doesn't end until January 14, 2020. And then on October 26, 2012, Microsoft unveils Windows 8 and is severely criticized by consumers and businesses who have no love for the radically redesigned interface, which supports keyboard, mouse, and touch. Microsoft always releases, also releases Windows 8 RT, which unofficially stands for Runtime, an OS for ARM-based tablets. And then a year later, Microsoft updates the OS to Windows 8.1, offering more enterprise features and added stability. The still business adoption remains slow. And then September 30, 2014, Microsoft skips Windows 9 and previews Windows 10, bringing back the familiarity of traditional Windows desktops but integrating the functionality of the new GUI, graphical user interface from Windows 8. In January 21, 2015, Microsoft unveils new features coming to Windows 10, including Cortana for the PC, the new Edge web browser, and touch-friendly Office apps. Microsoft also offers Windows 10 for free on PCs running Windows 7 and above for the first year.
This is the second of several Windows 10 conversations we're planning to have with you. And we've got a lot to share over the next two hours. We're hoping to cover three things. The first, how the feedback we've received, received since introducing Windows 10 is truly helping shape the future of Windows 10. And then, we will share the most comprehensive view yet of new experiences coming to Windows 10. You'll see Cortana like never before. You'll see entirely new ways of being productive and having fun. And you'll see some amazing new devices enabled by Windows 10. And then Satya will join us to discuss Windows and its importance to Microsoft. Now, we introduced Windows 10 that last September. Let me recap the key points from that discussion. First and foremost, Windows 10 will provide a seamless transition for our Windows 7 and Windows 8 customers, including the familiar desktop and start menu. And Windows 10 will be our best enterprise platform ever, enabling our enterprise customers to be more productive than ever before, simplifying management and deployment for IT, and working seamlessly with the existing enterprise apps. But most importantly, Windows 10 will protect corporate data better than ever. In fact, the hardware-based security of Windows 10 would have countered the techniques used in several of the recent headline-making attacks. And Windows 10 will support the broadest device family ever. Of course, it will work great on the laptop and the desktop. The most productive devices on the planet with keyboard, mouse, and touch. Our hardware partners are doing amazing work in this area, introducing several new designs of CES, thinner and lighter, with amazing screens. The Windows 10 Continuum Experience enables these incredible two-in-one devices that switch back and forth between the keyboard mouse mode and the touch tablet mode. Windows 10 on tablets, phablets, and phones will provide the best mobile experience for our Windows and Xbox users. With Windows 10, universal Windows apps come to Xbox One, the most fun game console ever. And Windows 10 has support for today's maker boards, enabling makers to do incredible things with Windows in the fast-growing Internet of Things space. Windows 10 is the only platform that enables Okay, now here's some new features for Windows 10. <clears throat> the Cortana Virtual Assistant, Microsoft's Virtual Assistant, which has been present on its phone operating system for a while now. One of the Amazon features of Windows 10. Accessible directly from the desktop with either a click or a voice command. And the new Microsoft Edge web browser. The new Microsoft web browser, formerly known as Project Spartan, wasn't included in the first few builds of Windows 10. And Edge is a new default web browser for Windows 10 with Internet Explorer consigned to the background to support legacy software. It includes a host of built-in features such as screen grab tool with touch screen capabilities. And there's what it looks like. A little cleaner, a little neater. Um, also has a new and improved start menu. After reinstating the start button in Windows 8.1, Microsoft is now bringing back the menu to go with it. Now it's a more familiar place where you can view regular used apps, have the ability to use universal search, including web search. Instead of swiping from the right of the screen to reveal the charms bar, it is possible to customize the start menu in a seemingly endless variety of possibilities. <clears throat> Windows Store apps on your desktop. To make the Metro interface work in a more traditional Windows way, apps downloaded from the Windows Store can now be resized and will include title bars so you can minimize them and maximize them. And there's what the new start menu looks like. It's all customizable. You can get rid of all those apps. You can have all the apps and have just a start menu to the left. It's, uh, it's pretty personalized.
Winston is supposed to bridge the gap between our touch-friendly tablets and the mouse and keyboard driven devices we've been using forever. And two features, start menu and continue, are going to help us get there. The Windows 10 start menu is designed to fix many of the issues folks had with Windows 8. You can pit after the start menu, and you'll see the colorful animated lifestyles that serve up useful information. But the list of apps running along the left side of the start menu are back too. You'll recognize these from Windows 7 or earlier. And most importantly, the start menu doesn't take up the entire screen anymore. If you're on a two-in-one device and using something with a touch screen, then you'll appreciate continuum. Windows 10 will shift itself to fit the mode you're working in. Pop the keyboard off the surface tablet, for example, and Windows 10 interface will shift to make things a little more touch friendly. Apps will become full screen, and the taskbar will become a little less cluttered. Pop the keyboard back on, and things will revert right back into place. So that was the first look at Start Menu and Continuum on Windows 10. I'm Nick Wittina. Be sure to check out the rest of our Windows 10 coverage. Thanks for watching. what the desktop looks like. And also the command prompt window. Improved Snap Assist for Windows. The new Snap Assist uh, UI will let you pull in Windows from anywhere, even if they're on a different virtual desktop to the one you're working on. It'll also make it easier to have different layouts of Windows, including integrated touch apps that can snap to the side in different grid layouts. And there's what uh, the Snap feature looks like. You just change the windows however you really want to, customize everything. It's got a new tablet mode, which you just demonstrated. There's a dedicated tablet mode that effectively makes the start menu go full screen and runs all apps in full screen. Hybrids of which there are many should switch between tablet and desktop modes automatically if set up correctly. Usually improved mail and calendar apps. Microsoft has done lots of work to improve the mail and calendar apps compared to Windows 8. They're faster and easier to use and can just more information into less space without making them feel cluttered. The mail app now has swipe gestures, a common feature of many mobile mail apps that works really well. Most importantly, mail supports pop, email, and the calendar app finally supports Google Calendar. And there's a screenshot of the calendar apps. It's a little bit neater, a little cleaner in the calendar. Windows 10 ushers in an era of more personal computing in a mobile first, cloud first world. We're building into Windows the experiences from productivity to gaming, how Spartan and the browser comes together, how Xbox Live comes together to enable that seamless crossover across devices as you move around at home and at work. We want to make Windows 10 the most loved release of Windows. We were inspired to bring more personal computing to the home and the workplace to enable our customers to do great things. So I'm very excited to announce that for the first year after Windows 10 is available, we will be making available a free upgrade to Windows 10 to all devices running Windows 8.1. We will also be making available a free upgrade to Windows 10 to all devices running Windows Phone 8.1. And last but not least, for the first year after Windows 10 is available, we will be making available a free upgrade to all of our customers still running Windows 7. We're bringing Cortana to the PC and we're going to change the way people use PCs through this natural interaction. Project Spark is a new browsing experience tuned for being mobile and working across these devices. We have a family of universal apps, including Office, that are going to make people productive with these devices. And in all cases, the user experience is tuned to a wide variety of form factors, so you get benefit from things like Continuum, where your device will adapt to how you use it. I am delighted to introduce you to the Microsoft Surface Hub. This is an 84-inch 4K display with integrated computer. It has built-in sensors 
that actually detected me when I came to the screen. It has built-in cameras, speakers, mics, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC. It's got it all. I'm incredibly excited to introduce to you Microsoft HoloLens. This is the first fully untethered holographic computer. HoloLens is real, and this will be available in the Windows 10 timeframe. Holographic computing enabled by Windows 10 is here. Today, we'll show you how gaming on Windows 10 will be more social and interactive by bringing together the best of the games you love to play, the people you play with, and the epic moments they create. All of this comes together in the Xbox app on Windows 10. DirectX is the graphic subsystem inside of Windows 10. And DirectX will make the games you're playing today even better. You have my commitment and the commitment of the entire Xbox team that we will treat gaming on Windows 10 with as much passion and energy as we have with the Xbox console. You'll see the result of that across the Windows gaming experience in the games portfolio for Microsoft Studios and our partners and in the Xbox Live service itself. As you can see, it does have a lot of really cool features. I don't know if anybody's ever seen anybody play around with it at all. A little bit. Other than Josh, other than Josh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the uh, minimum specifications are the same as 8. They say if you can run Windows 8, you can run Windows 10. It um, needs one gigahertz processor or faster, and just one gig for 32-bit of RAM, and two gigs of RAM for 64-bit. And the hard disk space is uh, 16 gig for 32-bit, and 20 gig for 64-bit. And then the graphics card has, uh, has to support Direct 9, X9, or later, with uh, the PDM one driver, and displays 1024 by 600 or above. And that will conclude my presentation.